What's going on YouTube? Air of Carthage here, and I am excited to show you this MSI X470 Gaming M7 AC. Alright folks, I'm excited. So courtesy of my awesome sponsor on this channel, MSI, I got a hold of this X470 Gaming M7 AC. This is an enthusiast level motherboard, and for MSI, remember there's three levels. So the base is the arsenal gaming, next is the performance gaming, and enthusiast is the top tier. So this motherboard is intended for those who want to get the most out of the second gen Ryzen processor um, and have the maximum potential for overclocking and utilizing all the features. All right, so let's go over the contents of the box real quick. You're gonna get this nice MSI backplate uh, we've also got the uh, drivers there on a disc. There's also an MSI logo in here, which is pretty cool. you got your instruction book that's underneath there. There's some light connectors, which I was holding up there. So some different RGB lighting connectors. And then also uh, an SLI bridge. And then there's four different um, SATA cables for plugging in optical drives and other things. But this is the actual Wi-Fi antennas here that go on the back. Like I said, we've got all those connectors for SATA. A couple of them have 90 degree connections, which is very nice for tight spaces. All right, so the board obviously is for your second generation Ryzen processors in the AM4 socket. Uh, this board is definitely intended for those who want to take advantage of all of the cores. It has core boost, which is a, it's got a premium layout and full digital power design. So it's really meant to help you do some extreme overclocking and maximize the potential. Down here, we have a uh, twin M.2 with the M.2 Shield Frozer, so that is a heat sink that helps keep your M.2 drives cool. You can see the steel armor on the PCIe and DIMM slots. This board also comes with the um, DDR4 Boost, uh, and it's going to give your DDR4 memory the biggest performance boost possible. It supports up to 3600 megahertz overclocked. Um, so again, lots of nice stuff. There's two. Uh, light extensions you can use uh, with both the regular RGB and then the rainbow RGB. So tons of support for customizing the case. You can see there the brackets for water cooling and air cooling. So another cool feature you can see up in the top left is there's dual 8-pin power connectors. Again, board is focused on helping you overclock. You see beefy heat sinks over all the power. Um, just really beautiful board aesthetically. The steel armor really matches nice with the black in the background. Um, if you are looking to put together a top-end build with top-end aesthetics and performance, this board is definitely going to do it. You can see all the PCIe expansion room, three full slots, two with armor, and then three short slots as well. So tons of expansion potential. It's got audio boost, um, and again, this board is just absolutely packed with features. It's got the, the, the LAN as the killer E2500 gigabit LAN, so this thing is definitely ready for gaming. Um, so this board, again is going to be for you if you want to buy your second gen Ryzen processor, overclock it to the roof, put the highest end components, build yourself a true high end gaming rig. Um, here i just given you a quick shot of what it looks like with the processor in socket and some good lighting. Like I said, this board is absolutely beautiful. One of the, one of the more or one of the best visually uh, appealing boards that I've seen and that's saying something because MSI really does have some fantastic motherboards in terms of the looks. So let me get you into some footage of me doing some building. That's pretty much a good coverage of the features, and we'll head to that. All right, you got to see the motherboard. Let's check out the processor I'm going to put in it. For the purpose of demonstrating this board, I got the best processor I could at the time, which was the Ryzen 2700X. This is going to be the 8-core, uh, 16-thread, 4.1 gigahertz. Um, of course, that's without the overclocking. Here's the processor, the way it comes in the box. It comes with this Wraith cooler. It has a nice RGB lighting effect. Very nice air cooler, perfectly capable of keeping this chip cool, even with a light overclock, as long as you're in good conditions in a good case. So I just wanted you to see that, even though I'm in a water cooler. I just want to give you all a demonstration of how easy it is to get the processor installed. So make sure you're grounded so you're not going to discharge static into it. You can see you just lift the lever here on the socket, just a single lever, quite easy to handle. Once you're ready, you take the uh, the processor, you line it up, there's a little arrow in the bottom left corner that lines up with an arrow on the motherboard, and you be very careful because there's little pins on the back, it should fit right into the slot, do not force it, and then just close the lever and you're good to go. Now, how to use the uh, twin M.2 Frozer shield here, you lift it up after you remove the screws, 
plug in your M.2 drive, pull the plastic off of the thermal pad, lay it down, and then literally extremely easy, just take a screwdriver here, tighten it back down, no need to make it too tight, you're good to go, and your M.2 drives are gonna sit nice and cool behind this, uh, this heat sink, um, especially since you look at that first one there and it would be right behind your graphics card. All right, just gonna give you a quick look at where the standoffs are. That's what you're gonna be lining your board up with. I've already got the back plate installed, so this should be pretty easy. I'll show you. All right, here I'll just give you a quick picture. Uh, you can see the screws where I've installed it in the case. Obviously, it's an ATX board. You've got nine screws that go into it. Um, you can see it inside the case here. It looks beautiful. The case I have is quite large, has plenty of room. This is just a standard ATX board. So if you have a case that'll fit an ATX board, um, that's what you really need to fit this. But again, just give you a look once we had it all screwed in here. All right, a little further along in the process, we've plugged in all the cables. You can see I'm only using one power cable, but you can use two, uh, one CPU power cable. I got the ATX power cable plugged in, all of my USB headers and my, uh, my different uh, fans. Everything's plugged in at this point. Just wanted to give you a view before we put the graphics card on there and it kind of blocked things up. You can see my water cooler mounting easily. Beautiful build. This is always one of my favorite parts. Just powered it up for the first time. Oh, yes. So beautiful. You can see some of the RGB lights coming off that motherboard. What a sweet build. All right, so I've got this thing set up to be a true powerhouse build. Um, yeah, there it is booting up for you. So this is a GTX 1080 Ti, 32 gigs of Dominator, 3000 megahertz RAM, uh, one M.2 SSD, a second 2.5 inch SSD, two terabyte hard drive, Elgato capture card, Cooler Master, Master Liquid 240 for cooling inside a Corsair Air 540 box. This thing is a true gaming beast. Just wanted to let you see the full innards of this, and that's really what this motherboard's gonna shine at. This motherboard is really intended for a top-end system, um, and that's what I've done justice to it here with, hopefully. Let's take a look at some of the benchmarks. All right, so first off, uh, on 3D Mark, I ran the Time Spy test, and I did it with three high-end processors that a gamer might use just to give you all a flavor of where things are gonna fall. The winner was actually the i9-7900X, and then I also tested the 2700X and the Intel 8700K. Now, that was the winner overall on the benchmark. That's an $870 Intel processor that won versus a $319 Ryzen processor versus a $350, again, Intel processor on the far right. So I'm showing you all the individual scores down through here just to show you that it was the same setup, same RAM, same graphics card. The only difference was the motherboards. Um, but if you go back and just check the beginning of that, is there a huge difference? No, not really. The, the Ryzen 2700X performed extremely well in the benchmarks, keeping almost the pace of a much more expensive Intel rival. So very impressive performance. Like I said, not the same, but when you think of the cost, definitely better cost for performance. All right, so finally, the most important benchmark for y'all, but does it run Total War Warhammer 2? Well, yes, absolutely. I actually used this processor. I replaced my Intel 80, uh, i7-8700K for about two weeks and ran this Ryzen processor. This is some footage from that. Um, I, the processor runs absolutely brilliant. Uh, it ran the game great. Ultra benchmark, uh, it did about 77 frames per second at 2K resolution, and it did uh, around 100 or more on 1080p. Um, again, you all saw the graphics card and the RAM I was using. Um, so very comparable performance to an i7-8700K at stock. And honestly, even overclocked, there wasn't much difference. Um, I did not try to overclock the Ryzen processor, just ran it stock the whole time, streamed with it, recorded with it, played the games with it. It took everything I threw at it and did it beautifully and ran about 20 degrees cooler than the Intel processor did. So a very impressive processor, did a fantastic job gaming, as you can see here. I loved it. So let's bring this thing first full circle, wrap it up real quick. What was the overall verdict? Beautiful board, fantastic features. I demand a high-end gaming system because I have to record. The games have to look their best. I need something that can stream. I need something that can encode video and edit video. And this motherboard, this uh, MSI X470 M7 AC, this thing was definitely up to the challenge. It looked fantastic in my build, so it passed the looks department. It has all the expansions I could ever need. 
It ran all, all my high-end gaming components, did it super smooth, perfectly stable, no crashes, kept my uh, M.2 drive cool, processor got all the power it needed to run efficiently, it had built-in game boost, it easily overclocked my RAM, um, was running extremely fast RAM. Again, this motherboard's fantastic. If you're looking for a high-end Ryzen gaming build, don't look any further. It's this board. So thank you to MSI for sponsoring the channel. Thank you for letting me try out this motherboard. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the chat. Happy to answer it for you. Again, if you're looking for a second-gen Ryzen high-end build, Gaming M7. X470 Gaming M7. This is the way to go. Hope you all enjoyed it. Like I said, hit me up with your questions. Air of Carthage, signing out.